Hello, we will jump right into the lesson and take up where we left off the last session. So in the last session we were on our front side and propped up onto the elbows and we were lifting and lowering the spine in between the shoulder blades. So instead of moving the shoulders, we were moving the spine, the chest up and down in some variations. And this, of course, created marvelous effects, a really good feeling for the shoulder blades, shoulders, the chest upright walking, the legs, everything improved. But there's no limit to improvement. A few movements can already make a big improvement, but how good can it get? So let's add a few movements to what we had last session. So we were lifting and lowering the spine and the last posture was with the arms extended. So if it's not too much trouble, I said the last time, uh, please, if you would like to join, come into this posture and you will see if the spine is not flexible enough, then this is not a very comfortable posture. So let's change that posture and come to kneel on all fours. So you're still on your arms, extended arms, but kneeling on your knees. And let's just repeat the last movement to bring the chest, the chest bone closer to the floor and further away from the floor, closer to the floor and further away from the floor. It's kind of a mock up fake push-ups, isn't it? Uh, uh, movement of the shoulder blades. The medial border of the shoulder blades, they come closer to each other and further away from each other. So it's not a movement of the head up and down, but of the whole chest up and down. And see how, how it is in, in this position. And see how it is when you go really, really, really slow. And maybe if you're differentiated enough, if you're good enough, you can do it only with one arm. So with the right shoulder blade, the right shoulder blade letting go and pushing up, or the left one letting go and pushing up. So instead of doing it with both shoulder blades or shoulders, you do it only with one. Quite difficult, but really shows you the differences between the right and the left shoulder. Almost like being able to raise the right or the left eyebrow separately. And then let's take a short break. Just come onto your back, feel, first of all, to relax the wrists, but just to feel how it is to lie on your back right now. How is your feeling of your shoulders? How do your shoulders touch the floor, the spine, the area in between your shoulder blades? And then swiftly we continue. Please come back again onto all fours. And let's just repeat the last movement to bring the chest closer to the floor and further away from the floor. Compare how it is when you come onto your elbows and you lift and lower your spine when you're on your elbows, but you're also on your knees. And compare that how it is with your arms straight. So what's the difference when your arms are straight and you have that movement or when your elbows are bent and you have that movement? So what's the, what's the difference in your hip joints, in your spine, in your shoulders, in the movement of which, of what, of the feet, what is different? So now let's review a movement we had in the last lesson. Extend your right arm on the floor, but don't completely bend it and don't completely straighten your right arm out and start to lift your right elbow. To lift your right elbow and your index finger or middle finger should leave the floor last. Keep your hand really relaxed, the hand is totally relaxed, hanging from the lower arm, the wrist is just bending and doing nothing. And you lift your right elbow, the right arm, so it's of course not only a movement of the arm, but a movement of the shoulder. 
and then on the other left side also, extend your left arm, lean on your right elbow, extend your left arm, and lift your left elbow, keep your left hand relaxed, hanging. Just a couple of times and then return onto your hands and lift and lower your spine and see what different that made. And, and maybe just these few movements made already a big difference when it's, everything is easier. So let's tighten that up a little bit. Bring your hands to stand in front of your knees and sit back as far as it's comfortable. And the chest bone closer to the floor and further away from the floor or we can tighten this up even more and lean on your elbows in front of your knees. So now there's not so much movement anymore, isn't there? And then come to lie onto your belly again. So we want to compare how is that how is that that's different? How is that different for your spine, for your lower, for your lower spine, for your what is different? What is the difference between being flat <laughs> on the floor with the legs long and spread out, or with the legs with the knees standing, standing on your knees, or with your elbows to your knees when you're really small? How is that? How does this change the movement? What, what is the difference? So I leave this question to you to discover what's different. And let's take a break on the back. Ah, okay, and then feel how it is to lie on the back. So it's not just a loose feeling, it's a different feeling. But what is different to before? Then. We come back onto all fours and this time instead of sinking the spine and lifting the spine, we will do another movement of the spine, maybe a more useful one. We will do the, we will lower the head and lift the head. Lower the head and lift the head, that's a useful movement. And when you lower your head and lift the head, see how much of your whole spine does participate in this movement. Is it only your neck that is moving or do you also have movement in your middle back? Do you have movement in your hip joints? Do you have movement in your legs or feet even? So, could be the old cat camel pose, but our focus is on the cervical spine, on lowering the head and lifting the head, but still allowing everything else to participate. So let's tighten up the situation a little bit more again. Come onto your elbows and continue with the same movement on the elbows. Lift your head and lower the head. And then we tighten it up even more, bring your elbows to your knees and lift your head and lower your head. So we could do it really slowly, slowly, slowly to feel the details. So maybe that's what we are interested in actually, to look at the details. Because big and powerful movements we can find anywhere, but these very detailed movements. So let's for example, ask the question about the midline. So, maybe give yourself a little bit more space again. You don't have to make yourself very small, but just be on your elbows and on your knees and lift and lower the head. But instead of having both eyes open, 
have only your left eye open. So you can cover your right eye with your right hand, for example, or just cover your right eye with your right eyelid and keep looking forward straight. So your left eye is open and you're looking to the floor and you're tracing the midline with your left eye. So of course this will turn your head a little bit to the right, which will make the nose deviate from the midline. So keep looking at the midline with your left eye and lift and lower your head slowly or fast, very fast or very slow. But notice that this is a different movement. It, it creates a difference, a new way of looking at this movement or at yourself or at how you study and learn and perceive and gather and take new things and see if they are useful to you. And then, of course, we switch eyes, so close your left eye and only look with your right eye towards the midline and trace the midline with your right eye. While you lift and lower your head. And that's funny, of course, yes, isn't it? Like, do you lift your eyes or your eye and your head at the same time? Or does the head follow the movement of your eye? Does your eye jump suddenly? So suddenly, details become apparent, which we couldn't see before when we quiet down a little bit and make these kind of differentiations. And then have both eyes open again. You can have your arm straight or your elbows bent, but continue with this movement of lifting and lowering the head and now try to trace the midline with both eyes and, and see how that, how that is suddenly different when both eyes are open as opposed to just one eye. And where is the midline now? And are you even symmetric? Are you leaning more on one leg or on one elbow than on the other? So, details become apparent and you get to know yourself and start, you start to see things, you start to have new information and of course as soon as you have new information you can work with that new information. So that's, I, I find this very interesting. And then let's take a break on the back. If you need more time of course, I know from the feedback in the comments some, some really like to use the pause button, some don't like it. If you want to pause, pause, if you need more time or if you want to restart. And also take some time to perceive yourself in resting. So it's not just a rest, but you want to know how, how are you lying now? How do you perceive yourself now? What's, what's new? What's different? Okay, and then turn onto your front side, prop yourself up on both elbows and lift and lower your spine and, and see how this is now in, in this lesson, how this has changed to the beginning of this lesson. And in this position, lower and lift your head and see if you can see your feet when you lower your head or your belly button. Lift the head. And then we will finish this lesson and just feel, feel how your shoulders are now. when you look around or when you look up and when you look down and suddenly you remember when you look to one side and you look up we did this thing with just one eye on the floor and there's a midline and wow maybe your perception has improved let's keep this lesson short and sweet you can always repeat it and so the last thing we have to do in this lesson is to come up to standing and see how it is in standing and also have some of these 
benefits we get on a physical level in this case with the shoulders but also maybe with walking with how you perceive your spine with how well you can move your head up and down does it how well your spine can support the movements of your head so when you look up it's not just the neck that looks up but you can remember it's the whole spine that supports the head or when you look down it's not just the neck that looks down but there's also the support of the whole spine for that <laughs> all right so i hope you found that interesting and as interesting as i found it exploring and teaching this lesson to put these movements together thank you for watching and see you in the next video